uh, today, and I, I appreciate the, this hearing. So uh, this is my third term on this this committee, and, and we've we've heard some about a lot of scary things, whether it's last week, uh, what's going on in North Korea, Iran, the humanitarian crisis in Syria. I could go on and on. Um, but the Russian interference with our election, to me, is the scariest of, of, of recent activities that, that, I, that I have learned about. And uh, that's why I think, and what's also very surprising, it is very rare that we have all the panelists in front of our committee seem to be agreeing that never happens. So that makes it even more alarming to me. Uh, I, I want to, I'm going to ask a question before I give a whole speech, and that is this. Uh, one of the things that I think you all mentioned is that there seems to be this pattern of interference with elections uh, before ours and going on. And so uh, we know, uh, for example, I think one of you said that, that uh, a lot of false stories are spread. Uh, I, my question is, do the, is, is there any kind of pattern of Russia collecting, comprom compromising information on candidates, as well as spreading the false stories? Oh, I mean, we don't know because, uh, but we do know that the, for example, the German equivalent of the FBI and the German equivalent of the uh, CIA, the Verfassungsschutz and Bundesnachrichtendienst, actually have made stronger statements than U.S. intelligence agencies on the hacking of the entire Bundestag uh, already in 2015, and have also said that political parties are being hacked. The DSGE, which is the French Foreign Intelligence Agency, has again said that they are, that the Russians are trying to disrupt the elections in favor of one candidate. So we know they're doing that, but we don't, we have not seen, see, the, the hacking works when you dox. Okay, I mean, can I, I want to get to the second point, which is, which is, have you seen any evidence of the Russians collecting compromising information on candidates? It's so it becomes uh, compromising when you publish it. Ambassador Bear. I, th I mean, I think one of the challenges here that President Elvis is getting at is that um, if you want to effectively control someone, you don't actually put it out there. So the answer is we don't know what, what efforts at using compromise as a way of leveraging behavior or information are currently being used because by definition, effective compromise means the threat, using that threat. And obviously once the information's out there, it's not a very uh, good lever anymore. How many uh, false stories, I mean, my colleagues uh, talked today about, well, isn't it too bad there were some t true information that was put out and it's too bad. How, how much false information was put out uh, to, to the best of your knowledge, in, in our campaign, how much false information was put out against Hillary Clinton? I think it would be difficult to quantify. I, I, I know some of the people who have been doing open source analysis of this, uh, of the engagement in our election, and I'd be happy to, um, to deliver to your office a, a, a broader analysis. I think the important thing here is, and I agree. Well, would it be surprising to hear, hear that people, that we have heard it's, hundreds of thousands of, of false tweets and Facebook pages and whatever uh, kind of social media that's getting out there? That wouldn't be surprising at all. I mean, there, there are certainly examples, one in Germany recently, where, uh, where the Russian propaganda made up a crime that they alleged was perpetrated by a migrant, which never, never occurred and was revealed to be completely false from whole cloth and is consistent with normal Russian propaganda practices. So l let, me, let me just sum up by saying this. Uh, and and why I want to just join my colleagues who are calling for an independent review of what of of, of these matters. Uh, listen, I believe uh, Putin's about Putin. P Putin isn't trying to help Mr. Trump because he likes Mr. Trump. He's 
he, for some reason, he believes, I think, he was going to get a better deal. I don't know whether it's because he didn't like Hillary Clinton or, or, Mr., or President Trump's comments are based on ignorance or greed or, or financial ties or he, I, I don't know why uh, the president is accusing our um, uh, President Obama of spying on him. Is, is he reading Russian information? I have no idea. And I think uh, the American people have the same kind of questions. And, uh, you know, we had my first hearing, uh, Mr. Chair, when I was on this committee was Hillary Clinton to, talking about Benghazi. And then there was probably nine hearings on Benghazi. Seven million dollars spent, and listen, Benghazi was bad, but if Benghazi was bad, let me tell you something. The Russians trying to take over our elections with all that they did, that is very, very bad, and we need to start having some independent reviews and hearings until we get to the bottom of this. And I thank you all for being with us today, and I yield back. We go to Mr. Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to uh, thank the Chairman for holding this important hearing. And as uh